I'm talking now with Renee Fallitz. Renee, I understand that you taught uh, NIM sign language, is that right? Back in the 70s? 1976, 1977. For 11 months, uh, I was in charge of teaching him sign language and I was his nutritionist. I lived at the house with him, with some of the other instructors. And so when you say you lived at the house with him, this was part of the project to try to raise him as though he were a human? Was that at that time or was um, that before that? I never thought of him as human. I didn't anthropomorphize him, but he lived in the house. He had half the house and we lived in the other half. We had it separated by locked doors. Uh, and we would go into the chimp side when we were responsible for taking care of him. We worked with him one on one. And the reason, for, the reason for having him in the house then was what was the what was the purpose of that? That's where he lived. That was his home, uh, and that's what makes uh, his life so tragic. This was a huge mansion with on about 17 to 20 acres. I can't remember the exact number. It was a multi-million dollar estate in Riverdale, New York. He had uh, a gym, a kitchen, a classroom. Uh, we lived in the house with him and beautiful bedrooms with no furniture, but, uh, and then when the project closed, he was put in a cage. Wow, that's tragic. My understanding is that you were trying to teach him sentence structure, is that right? Uh, as an interpreter for the deaf and a speech therapist, I know the difference between vocabulary and language. Language is the grammar and how you put words together like I'm doing with you. Vocabulary is book, run, play. That's where he was. He he put words together, but were they grammatical or did they make any sense? Uh, we called it word salad. So yes, he had vocabulary of at least, when I left it was 115, it actually probably was higher than that, about 115 to 120 words. We recorded every time he did a sentence like uh, nim eat yogurt or he would go nim nim yogurt eat. Since he did it different all the time, there was no consistency. Was there language? Was it American Sign Language? No, because that part I knew. So did he have vocabulary? Yes. Yes, he acquired vocabulary. Did he acquire language as a professional speech pathologist? No. And can you tell me what your connection with either the book or the film is and why you're here this weekend? OK. Um, I'm in the book because that was fun. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, because I was, I was part of his life while he was at the Delafield estate with Project Nim before he was sent away and uh, in the movie. Uh, the significant thing that I, I guess why I'm in the movie is I got bit on the face. He, I don't know why he bit me on the face, but he did and he caused a lot of damage and within weeks once everybody realized how strong he was and the difficult he was to control, the project was closed. Wow. Very soon after I got out of the hospital. And uh, tell me your connection now with, with Carrie and the events of this weekend. Oh, I um, <laughs> found out about them. I live in Fort Lauderdale and I'm a speech language pathologist in Miami in the school system. And uh, I was reading about something and I, I got hold of Bob, um, I just forgot his last name, Ingersoll. Bob Ingersoll, and he told me about that he was coming to Florida. I went, ooh, where? And next thing I know, I'm here. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there anything you'd like to tell our viewers about, uh, about uh, NIM or the project or anything? Yes, I would. Chimps do not belong in captivity. I am against them. I know the movie does not make this statement, and they don't... James Marsh is very clear about this. He doesn't want to have a point of view about what is moral and not moral. This is just a story about Nim. But for myself, I wish to tell people, from experience, I was bit quite a bit. Chimps cannot be raised by humans. They do not. It's cruel. They, it's dangerous to the humans. It's dangerous to the chimp. And I don't think they belong in commercials. I don't think they belong in circuses. They belong where they're supposed to be with their families and raised in the wild or in sanctuaries now, not to be used in research. They're just too smart. They're 99% genetically the same as humans. You, you can't do it. It's, it's cruel.
Thank you, Renee. I appreciate your time. Thank you.